Okay. Everything inside this needs to be cut out? Yep. Yes. Okay. And then everything, and then, everything outside the other line needs to be cut out as well. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So we could do it as a profile cut. So it's not going to turn everything inside this into chips. So basically, it'll like just like a cookie cutting, it's going to fall apart. So if you have a yeah. vacuum table, that piece, you can even put like bridges and tabs or whole, like hold downs to have it stay intact. So what we're going to do is a operation called profiling. So if you go to the menu that says two axis, you'll find uh, several different operation types. So our standard configuration offers right from roughing all the way to knife cutting with the standard configuration. The remachining is only offered in the pro. So we'll start with a profile cut. So profile is it follows the curve either to the left side or the right side, or it could be inside or outside. So I'm going to choose select curve edge regions in here. I'll pick this one, right click on it. So the geometry is selected. I can make a selection for the tool. Uh, I have a half an inch end mill, which is a 12.7 millimeter. I can go with that. Beats and speeds are loaded from the tool. I can set the clearance to be automatic. In the cutting parameters, I could choose to climb or conventional cut, like an up cut or a down cut, uh, depending on what you how you like to cut. And then you can choose a cut side to be outside or inside. You can specify if you want to leave any side stock or wall stock, like if you want to stay off, like maybe 0.1 millimeter from the edge, you can put in a stock to leave. So the cut will be 0.1 inch off from any in the inside edges. You can also- so that'd be like if I wanted to do some final finishing and I can remove right. that point one by, okay, right. okay, okay, go on. Yep. Or in some cases, you may want to apply some kind of a coating on the inside. You want to slightly overcut it. You can put in a negative stock value, so like minus 0.1. So it, it takes an additional 0.1 on each side. Okay. So you don't have to go back and offset the drawing or the shape of the geometry. You can control that in your uh, cutting in the, when you generate the tool pad. Great. And then Great. in the cut Thank levels, you. you can specify how deep you want to cut. So we know the total depth is 19.05. And then if you want to add like maybe like, you know, a small amount to go all the way through into your spoil board, you can change this to like maybe say 19.1, for example. You can control the depth. And then you can break it up into multiple passes, rough and finish, and you can break the rough into multiple levels. You could say you only want to take out maybe, you know, five millimeters per cut if the material is hard. If it's soft, you can probably take it in like two steps or even just one pass, right? You can break it up so you have the control in here to break it up here. I could say I want to just take it out in two levels. Is that that slider is selecting uh, nine, like it's going to take off, whatever, where are you right now? So nine, it's going to take off. 9.5 millimeters each pass, or is that going yes. to be like nine and a half passes? Well, it'll be 9.55, no greater than 9.5 millimeters per pass. It'll be equal okay. to or less than 9.55 millimeter per pass. Awesome. Okay, and then you can control your entry and exit, how you want the cutter to enter and leave the material like ramping in. You can lead in, lead out. You can control that. I could say I want to ramp in, give it a uh, you know height in here ramp height I can say and then the angle I can give it an angle here the same thing can be also be done for retract I could just say retract apply the entry and exit you can cut uh, fit true arcs into your tool path so as you follow along the radiuses it's not breaking up into a bunch of tiny little linear segments if you need to do bridges and tabs you can do bridges and tabs in here and then pick generate so that creates your tool path you can see we are ramping in gradually and it's doing it in two levels two passes yes the uh, tool pad the turquoise colored motions are your linear cutting dark blue or true arcs being generated in here and you can also look at the tool pad as you go in two levels you can see those are the two levels the first pass is going down 9.55 millimeters the next pass is going down an additional 9.5 millimeters to take it to 19.1 in total okay okay so, now we can go to the simulate tab in here and we can select the uh, operation and then click on play and that shows your cut material simulation. You can control the simulation speed. Uh, this is applying a texture in here. You can see the texture of wood being applied during the simulation. And okay. It's going all the way through slightly below the thickness of the sheet to get a nice clean cut. Yes. So this would be awesome. a profile cut on the inside. Now, if you wanted to 
uh, have like hold downs, we call it bridges and cabs. I can go into the operation in here, advanced head, I can select either to do a triangular bridge or a rectangular bridge. I can specify the height for the bridge. Like I say, the bridge could be five millimeters in height, bridge length, maybe put in 25 millimeters, and how many bridges, I can say four of them generate it. So that's gonna create uh, four bridges on the part. You can see one, two, and three, and four. So you can see the bridges are automatically created on the part, but if you like to precisely control the location of bridges, let's say you wanna have one and two on each of these sides and then not on these sides and you want to put them on the back you can go ahead and define them as what is called a predefined region i can select that and then i can manually place uh, bridges in here i can say uh, select bridge points i can use these object snaps say one at the midpoint of this i can maybe place one somewhere over here i'm just going to pick two points and i'm going to pick the location of the bridges where the most uh, ideal based on the part, and then if you also had to have one on each side, you can do that or right click on it. So we now created bridge points in here. I'm gonna go back and drop the sketch, which I, or the curve I selected, and use this predefined option, and then go back and generate it. You'll now notice that the bridges are placed exactly where you created those bridge points. And you can add and drop bridge points so you can customize those as well. So now we have right. bridges or tabs like hold downs. So the, the inside piece is not gonna fly out and you can basically break them apart. So I just use a triangular option in here, but I can go back and change it to rectangular or I can even reduce the height. So you have control to play with those settings. So All right. we got to the Good. inside, we wanna do the outside. I'm gonna repeat the same operation, copy, right click, right click on it and do a paste. And I could do the same step in here, double click to edit, remove the selection, Go pick this one here and then change the cut side from inside to outside. And if you do not want to add any bridges, you can set it to none, generate it. So that takes it out in two passes. With the same tool, we're going to go from an inside cut to an outside cut. Wow, okay. Again, if you need to do bridges and tabs, similar process for what we did earlier. So we have the toolpaths programmed. And you can look at the estimated time, right-click information based on the feeds and speeds that you put in.